so far, what we've been looking at are tests of a single population mean, based on a random sample from the population. Let's move on to test differences between two means. Here we're concerned about the difference between the two means. If we're concerned that the two means may not be the same, the alternative hypothesis would be mu1 minus mu2 not equal zero. The null hypothesis would therefore be mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. If we're concerned that mu1 is larger than mu2, the alternative hypothesis would be mu1 minus mu2 greater than zero. The null hypothesis would then be the opposite, that is mu1 minus mu2 is less than or equal to zero, and vice versa for the case where mu1 is smaller than mu2. There are a number of factors to consider when deciding what kind of test to apply for difference between two means. Note that in all of these tests that we're going to discuss, the distributions of both populations have to be normal. Solutions for non-normal distributions are outside the scope of the level one curriculum. The first thing you need to know is if the two populations are independent from each other. If they are independent, we need to determine if their variances can be assumed to be equal. If they are, we can use a t-test where we estimate a pooled estimator of the common variance. In this case, the t-statistic is computed as such. Of special note is this term, sp squared, which is the pooled variance. The pooled variance is an estimator of the common variance. You're not expected to memorize these formula. The degrees of freedom for this t distribution is the sample size n1 plus n2 minus 2. Other than these differences, the procedure to perform a hypothesis test is the same as that for a single mean. In the case where the variances cannot be assumed to be equal, the variances cannot be pooled. We have to use the individual sample variances instead. The degrees of freedom are a lot more complicated. Similarly, you're not expected to memorize these formula. In the case that the two populations are not independent, we have no choice but to use the paired comparisons test. In this case, instead of considering the samples independently, the samples from population 1 have to be paired with the corresponding samples from population 2. This method is essentially creating a random variable d which is the difference between the observation in population 1 and the corresponding observation in population 2. We can now treat d as a single random variable and perform hypothesis testing on it as in the case of a single mean. Let's run through a few examples and see if you can spot which approach to apply for each of the scenarios given. Let's recall the two key questions we need to ask. Firstly, are the returns of the two populations independent? It's not mentioned explicitly, but we can make deductions. Since the stocks are likely different, and the events happened over different time periods, there's likely no correlation between the two populations. We can therefore assume that the returns are independent. The second question we need to answer, can we assume that the variances are the same? Again, it's not mentioned explicitly, but since the two populations are outcomes from two unrelated events, there is no reason to assume that their variances are the same. Since the two populations are independent and their variances are not the same, we use the t-distribution with modified degrees of freedom and non-pooled variance. Continuing with the problem, Kent calculated the test statistic to be 1.672 and the degrees of freedom as 80. Perform a hypothesis test at 5% significant level to determine if Kent's suspicion is substantiated. Firstly, let's state the hypotheses. Let mu1 be the mean return of stocks that were split and mu2 be the mean return of stocks that were consolidated. Since Kent's suspicion is that the two means are not equal, our alternative hypothesis is therefore mu1 minus mu2 not equal zero. The null hypothesis is 
mu1 minus mu2 equals zero. Next, let's state the decision rule. Looking at the t-table, where degrees of freedom equals 80, and the two-tail cumulative probability equals 0.05, we get the critical values plus and minus 1.99. The decision rule can be stated as reject H0 if T is less than minus 1.99 or if T is greater than 1.99. Given the test statistic of 1.672, it does not fall within the rejection regions. We therefore fail to reject H0 and Kent Boyle's suspicion cannot be substantiated at 5% level of significance. Let's try another question. As always, the first question we need to ask is if the two populations can be assumed independent. Since the same stocks are chosen for both samples, the volatilities of the two samples cannot be independent. Therefore, the most appropriate approach is the paired comparisons test. Continuing with the question, upon analysing the sample, Hannah found that the mean of the difference in volatilities between the first and the last hours of trading is 2.5, with a standard deviation of 8.9. Perform a hypothesis test at 10% level of significance to determine if the observation is valid. As always, we start with the hypotheses. As determined earlier, this is a paired comparisons test, so the parameter here is the difference between the first hour volatility and the last hour volatility of the same stock. The suspicion is that volatility is higher in the first hour, so the alternative hypothesis is that mean of D is greater than zero. The null is therefore the mean of D is less than or equal to zero. The next step is to state the decision rule. We have here a one-tailed t-test with 29 degrees of freedom. Looking at the t-table, we get the critical value of 1.311. So, the decision rule is to reject H0 if the test statistic is greater than 1.311. To determine the test statistic, we plug in the figures to a t-statistic for a sample size of 30. The test statistic is 1.539. Since the test statistic falls in the rejection region, we can reject H0. As such, Hannah's observation that the volatility of stocks is greater in the first hour than the last hour of trading is valid at 10% significance level. In summary, we've gone through different scenarios and the appropriate approaches to perform hypothesis tests concerning the mean. In the case of a single mean, there are three key questions we need to answer. The first is whether the population distribution is normal. If it is, we need to find out whether the population variance is known. If the population variance is known, we can use the z-statistic for the hypothesis test. More likely than not, the population variance is unknown. We need to perform a standard t-test with n-1 degrees of freedom. If the population distribution is unknown or not normal, we need to know whether the sample size is at least 30. If it is, we can approximate the sampling distribution as normal and proceed to use either the z-distribution or t-distribution based on whether the variance is known. Otherwise, the problem cannot be solved. In the case of testing the difference between two means, the first question to ask is if both population distributions are normal. If they are not both normal, the solution is not within the scope of the CFA curriculum. If they are both normal, the next question to ask is if the samples are independent from each other. If they are, we need to determine if the variances can be assumed equal. If we can assume them to be equal, we use the t-statistic with pooled variance approach. The degrees of freedom is the sum of the two sample sizes minus two. If we cannot assume equal population variances, we cannot use the pooled variance approach. The degrees of freedom is estimated from the population variances as indicated here. You are unlikely to have to memorize some of these more complicated formula. You should instead focus on the fact that both of these tests involve t-statistics and depend on the degrees of freedom. In the event that the samples are dependent on each other, 
we use the paired comparisons test. This test is essentially the standard t-test with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. The key is to pair the samples and calculate their differences. The difference is considered as one single random variable to be tested here. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.